Thank you. You're still watching one on one and our focus is on orphanage children and vulnerable children in Nigeria. Okay, so now let's talk about um, adoption because with orphanages, what's the process of adoption um, like to adopt a child in Nigeria? Mm, can I can I first say this? Like I told you earlier, it's a journey. First is a journey. It's even it's not like steps four steps and I'm there. No, because you are, you are taking over a child's life, a child's future, a child's destiny. So it's a journey. So when you know it's a journey, your mind should be prepared for all the hassles and you know the, what you go through. So when people know that, it's easier for you to understand the process. So you don't feel, ah, ah why this? Yes, it has to because the life is involved. So the, the adoption process is getting better. But it can be, of course, be much better. People are getting enlightened about it. There are NGOs that support, you know, um, such. We don't do direct adoption for people, but we partner with NGOs. We know most of these parents, they reach out to us for adoption and we connect them to another NGO, which is our sister NGO, okay. that do the processing for them of, and all that. But we wanted to realize that it's possible. It's happening already. Not that it's even possible. It's going on. I can speak for Lagos State. I can speak for Lagos State. It takes a while. Number one, you have to be financially capable. Okay. You have to be mentally capable. They will do all this background check on you. So it's not my personal space anymore when you want to do adoption. They have mm. to know every detail about mm. you. And it's not just four steps. It's not ten steps. It's a journey. So you, you go through a whole lot because you're taking over a child. So you should prepare for it. So, But it's, it's definitely possible. Minimum of six months to one year. You get a letter of authorization from Lagos State Ministry of Youth and Sport. You get a letter authorizing you to go forth for adoption for any of the orphanages. You take the letter to any of the homes and definitely know that the homes to have um, people that have collected those letters too so you're not yeah. the only one so they have a list of waiting parents you know to take up you know a child for adoption so you have to wait for when your child and of course selection you can't go to any orphanage and say i want that child oh. no you can't you can't okay. do that they will let you know they're available the ages you can't you can't pick a gender you okay. can say i want a girl or i want a boy mm -hmm. but i know that babies are not easy these days because um I don't know why, a whole lot of reasons that babies are not easy to come by in the homes. They are more of toddlers. They are toddlers. They are bigger toddlers, like six, seven year olds. They are more of them, um, two, three, four. And also babies, for the ones we work with, we don't have a lot of babies in, in the homes, just few. So you, I'm sure we work with like six orphanages. So if you have six, in, you can use that data to know that it's not like much because a lot of um, baby factories are how they do government are clamoring on them right now and i think it's getting better than before that they were now if they even if there are any they are of of course like secrets quickly did done not openly yeah. when it was rampant okay you know, i don't need to interrupt back. you though and say mm. that or ask rather that if adoption is going on why is there still a lot of stigma you know a lot of hiding in uh, adopting them children why, why is that we, we we tend to listen more we do we we tend to listen to the noise to the crowd we forget the reason why we want to do this in the first place the reason why you want to do this to extend the so much love that you have within you to give to another child you feel this child can be have a better life with me mm. and so if you if you have the reason don't listen to the noise or they like said when you go to the market that you go and buy what you want to buy there's always noise at the market True. so they would like i was telling you earlier even a perfect life there's still noise people will still wonder why you are doing this or why you are doing that somebody okay. just wants to pop nose in your business so if you know that i want to do this because i love to have a child around me i want to pass this beautiful gift of life that god has given me into another child mm -hmm. then go for it regardless people will talk definitely people will call and you'll be proud about it because i even feel like i was telling you that in the olden days when our I, I know i know my my mom we know i even know aunties that got into such marital you know environment that when you lose your husband they give you to uh, your family member maybe uh, your husband's younger brother and it takes care of the woman and the children, children. and it's so that's like adoption it takes care of the woman yes. and the children and it's like a proud man that ah uh, it, it takes an extra man to do such you know Even to take full responsibility faith says yes so. yes so so it's something that you should be proud of to say that you want to go beyond yourself and take over another life and feed a life and make a life better. Because the fact is they are bringing the child into your home. Some of us go to the orphanages and drop food stuff and do Just all that. And girls yeah. move on. Some do custodians. They pay for school fees. They pay for the bills. and But they don't really have the child. But you have the child in your home. I think you're a big, you're a big person. And thumbs up to you for yeah. doing that. It's big. It's big. Okay, so now let me talk about, let's talk about a bit of the work that you have done. So 
tell us about Joseph. You found Joseph on the street. You took him up. Please tell us more about that. Oh, Joseph is a, um, he's a young boy that we found around them. Um, I work, I used to work then around Mobolaji Bank, Anthony, Ikeja. So I, I've been seeing him there for a while, but I, I see him like two weeks, you know, and all that. And I've seen that he'll always, always be on the same spot, lying down or just eating nothing. Like, I don't even know, maybe from a line loan or something. So I now investigated, speak to the last man. There were last man officials around there all the time. So I had one or two that were my, you know, when you keep working on a particular route, they get to know you yeah. and all that. So I was able to reach out to them and said, ah, what's this boy doing there? Is he going to wander away? You know, like he did the way he came. And they said, no, that it doesn't seem so that he has been there for over three months. Apparently I was on, I was on leave. So I took, uh, you know, and I said, ah, seriously, that under the rain, does he go inside any building to sleep? Or something they said no that is there that is always there i said so that they are the ones that give him clothes to cover himself or to eat and i said you guys can't reach out to authorities to come and pick him up ah they were like they can't they can't take that the process will be too much for them who will be responsible for him they wanted to do all that police Power. reports and all that they can't do that and i said okay fine i work with an ngo i introduced myself properly and i work with an ngo and they told me that uh, that i would want him not to be there. Let's see how we can help him. Luckily, a colleague was with me and he volunteered to work with me all through. You know, I said, okay, whatever you want to do, let's do it together. So I reached out to the NG, to the orphanages. These are the why we work with these orphanages. So I reached out to the orphanage I know can take because I noticed that he can't speak, he couldn't speak, you know, and he was malnourished. He was looking terrible. He couldn't speak. So maybe he had a speech issues and all that and it was not looking it was just looking terrible so i now said okay which orphanage can really take care of him if he was a special needs child i couldn't confirm because i'm not a medical talk doctor to say okay maybe he's a special needs child and i reached out to center for destitute edimo and i called the founder may so rest in peace he just passed away two weeks ago and i called him and i said ah, daddy this is what i found and this is who i found and what can we do to help mm. and he said ah that we have a whole lot of kids already the home is filled up and twinkle you know you see yourselves and all that. And I said, just one, just one space for him, please. He can't keep staying there. I said, okay, he can't do anything. You know the process with Alausa. Get police authorization, you know, get medical reports that he does not have HIV, he does not have meningitis. I said, ah, I'll have to do all that. I said, yes, yeah, so you have to do. Even though I'm even giving you the listening, I'm listening to you because it's you. You have a relationship with us. Normally I would have sent you to Alausa straight to go and and you know, agencies will take a whole lot. That boy might even die before we we'll come back there yeah. because it was now, that, it was rainy season, yes. That period was rainy season and it was raining heavily. So I was on leave. So I was on leave, but I was particularly coming there every time. So I was coming there every time to check on him. Then we, I and my colleague Tunde, we went to the police station at Ikeja. So we went to get police authorization, of course. You know yeah, the way the process, our, yes. our process. But luckily, they, I had I had opportunity to meet a female, the female person in charge, and she was quite nice. She just told me that I need to do the opus. I've never done a police report in my life. That was the first time they're going to type my police report, and but she was so nice to me, and she, you know it helped a little, at least to some extent. It really helped greatly, and were able to get the police report. Now it was medical. So Center for Destitute, had, they had this mini shuttle bus that they had to bring to carry him because we couldn't put him in public transport. It was so terrible. Flies were over him. He had a terrible injury on one of his legs, a big wound with deep cut and all that. So they took him to the hospital. We did medical. They were, the last man people were with us all through, so they were following up. And of course, police sent one person to, to monitor what we were doing. I say it all the time. If our police want to work, they work. They work. <laughs> well, how they really is he worked. now? He's, how, he's how amazing. He's, he's, he's been there for two years. So they call him Joseph John because okay. because he said he, 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 if he wants to you know do wala, he does wala. Like a normal child, he's like 17 there, but we don't know his age because we can't trace his family or anything. Mm -hmm. But he's fine. At least he have a shelter over his head. He's feeding well. And he's like, recently I still went there two weeks ago and I saw him and of course, he doesn't know me well, but he knows, he, he can recognize faces and he was able to say hello. He's, he can relate with the other children in the home. He's fine. He's okay, fantastic, well. fantastic. Well done and thank, thank you for you. that. Thank okay, you. so we'll take another break. And when we come up from this break, we'll talk about the government's responsibility to children in orphanage homes. What do they need to do? How do we need to, you know, has private individuals, has corporate bodies, what, what, how can we help the children in um, the orphanage home? So please still stay with us, still one-on-one. -on -one. We'll be right back.